Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And I kind of feel like today I'm hosting you in my living room. I don't know, it's kind of, I'm kind of in a chill vibe today. And I want to talk to you guys about imprint. I hope I'm saying this correctly because it's sort of like imprint but without the other eye. So it's imprint. And this is a print and demand platform that I was seeing so much when I was looking into actual artists and their links in bio on Instagram. Like the link in bio page that they had on Instagram that sends us, you know, to their Society6 store, to their Behance, to their Twitter, and to their in print. I remember they started like a few months ago that I was really, like I was searching through really nice uh, artists on Society6 and then I go to their Instagram and then I see in print. And then I see a really, really talented person on Redbubble and I go to their Instagram and I see in print. And to be honest, Every single person that had input on their link in bio or in one of their link pages, they had actual art. Like it wasn't like a t-shirt that says, I, I love my mommies or uh, say happy St. Patrick's Day. It was actual digital illustration, like heavy, like, I don't know, like painting. It was something really impressive. And I sort of had imprint written down in some notebook to check it out and I kept forgetting to do it. And I don't know which artist was it that drove me into actually looking into imprint. I think it was a week and a half ago that I saw it with some artist and I said, you know what, I'm going to check it out. And it wasn't just because I do stuff for this channel. It wasn't just because I'm constantly looking for print and demand suppliers and platforms that are designated for artists. It wasn't all that. It was also because with my very new style that I'm doing that I decided I'm going to upload onto puzzles on Zazzle. I was also thinking, you know, I can upload it maybe to Society6 because I think that my new style would look really nice on cards or on actual wall art and prints and I don't want to mix it up with Society6. I mean, I have this whole liquefied swirl effect, abstract patterns things going on in Society6 and my new art doesn't fit that. But maybe that imprint could be my solution. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to join imprint. I'm going to upload some stuff. And while I do it, I'm actually going to share with you guys the whole process of doing it. Little did I know that I won't be able to actually film the whole tutorial in one day. So this is the type of art that I was thinking to put on imprint. And this whole thing that I started doing when I was doing this Skillshare course that really helped me out. And I really found myself in this type of thing. And I mean, come on, and check out the stuff that I have on Society6. They are totally unrelated. Even though that I have started uploading some of these like patterns that have more like vivid lines, it's really not related. And yes, I can put it on Zazzle on puzzles because it's really adorable, but this store is just for puzzles and I wanted to sell art, which led me to imprint. And I mean, come on, check out these stuff. These are like, seriously talented people. I was looking at it and I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't know if I belong here, <laughs> but I was trying to check out more about them. So what is Imprint? Founded in 2006, they're owned by other artists. They have a bunch of these like FAQs and I was really trying to figure out, you know, selling your products, how much will you make? That's something that a lot of people want to know. And you make 50% of selling art prints, 40% from selling canvases, 30%, $5 from selling a frame, $5 from selling a phone case, and $1 for cards. So that was a bit nice. I mean, seeing the 50% on the art prints definitely seemed nice. And also $5 for phone cases, and they sell all their phone cases in $35. I mean, at least all the phone cases that I've seen are sold for $35. And I want to show you like how a page looks of a piece of art. So this is on a phone case and you can see all the various phone cases that they support. And if you scroll down, you see the artist that is selling it and you have the share buttons to share it on social media. And right under that, you have whatever this art is available on, on top of this, more art from this designer as well as more artists. So. It was kind of nice to see the segments that it's first of all, you know, this thing on other pieces and more from this artist and then everything else. And we are looking into how much will you earn because that's something that a lot of people want to know. I also check out something that's called running a sale on your own art. I mean, you can actually run sales and give discounts on the website like coupon codes. And yes, they do come off your total earnings as an artist. But it is nice that a marketplace lets you give out your own coupon codes sometimes, you know, if you want to 
have a special discount for people who are coming from Instagram or from TikTok or from somewhere else. You also have a, an option to order your own sample prints and they do come off a bit cheaper than anything else. I mean, if you're selling an art print for $25 and getting 12 and a half from it, you will be paying $8 for that print. Like you will be paying less. I'm going to show you that a little bit later because I did make an order for my own stuff. And all I had to do, you know, at first was to sign up. I thought it was going to be very easy. So I finished off all these uh, details with like a username and your first name and we're going to skip that. Then I got an, a message that they sent me an email to activate my account, which so far is so good. And at this point I was still thinking, you know, oh my God, I'm going to finish, you know, doing this today. It's going to be really, really nice. And I logged in to my account. And then I see that I need to add like a, and upload my photo. There is an about me section birthday. And there is also a Twitter username, Behance, Flickr, Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitch. To be honest, the only one I have out of those is Instagram. And even when I was filling out my Instagram, I kind of did something silly. And first of all, I use the Instagram of Meya.royo, which is the Instagram that I'm going to use to promote the art that I'm doing and not my main one. And I actually just copied the entire link instead of putting, you know, my Instagram username, which now that I see it retroactively, um, I didn't actually put Meya.royo. Like it doesn't say the whole thing. It just says Instagram.com uh, slash Meya. And then I did uh, like I love graphic design and illustration of various kinds, but mostly focusing on trying to spread my art, like my acrylic style and wrote a short bio on myself. I always recommend people to fill out these parts in any platform because, you know, this is something that a true artist is going to do. And a lot of people who get blocked from different platforms don't get that. They got blocked because the platform thought they were spamming. At that point, I also went on to upload a photo, which I didn't really see, like even after I chose it. Uh, but after I saved the whole process and refreshed the page, that's when I was able to see the photo that I have uploaded. I can't believe I missed out the Maya.royo thing though. It was like staring right at me. And then I went into my profile, it seemed nice. Uh, and then I went to open a store. I thought it's gonna be really fun. And then they're like saying, starting your own print store. So curated um, by our community of artists, new artists joined by invitation or through a short application process. So you need to keep to upload three images that are under five megabytes. They have to be JPEGs and RGB and you cannot upload, they don't have to be print ready and you cannot upload any mockups and just add files. Okay, at first I started adding some files and then I realized that they were too big. So I had to actually make them a bit smaller and what I did was basically sort of shrink, like first of all, like copying my art, not reducing the quality of the, of the say, like the original one but I just made everything that I have, like three designs that I had to be 3000 by 3000 pixels. So that would be a better size. And I chose one of my flowers, one of my owls and a face. I thought that it really showed uh, different types of things that I draw and also different colors. And again, this is the only thing that you can do here. And I was looking at it quite a while and I was looking at it and they were like, artists on the site is gonna help us choose and we'll let you know in 48 hours. And honestly, the first thing that it was the only thing that was in my mind was like, what? But I wanted to film today. <laughs> I wanted to show everybody how it's done, uh, but that wasn't really an option. So I clicked on submitting my request and waited for 48 hours. <laughs> in the meantime, I started looking into how the voting works. Am I gonna get approved? How am I gonna get approved? And generally started looking into statistics about imprint. Now, there is a website called SimilarWeb that really helps us out to know how much traffic does each website have. I think I actually did a full video on like what print on demand gets more traffic and I was comparing like the big ones. I will leave a link to that video if you guys are interested down below. But I was looking into SimilarWeb and I put in imprint.com because I was thinking to myself, you know, first of all, I am going to do my own marketing. That is a given. Second, I do believe in my art style. I do believe that my art is good. I do believe that I make beautiful things and it, and it took me a long time and a process with myself to be able to say something like this about my art, like to be calling it art and not product design. Like that's been what I've been doing for the past few years, but to actually do art. And I was thinking, you know, I am good at this. This is, is gonna work, but I do wanna know a bit more about the platform. So I, 
ran a search on SimilarWeb, and this is something that you can do, by the way, just go to SimilarWeb.com and run searches. This was like the free user search. So they were indeed founded in 2006, like they say, have between 11 and 50 employees. They are uh, sitting, their headquarters are in United States, Florida, Orlando, and the website makes roughly between 10 million and 15 million a year, which you might think is a lot, but if I look at Redbubble, so Redbubble makes pretty much between 100 million and 200 million a year, but we're going to get to Redbubble in, in a few minutes. Their global rank is 41,000 which is not a lot, and their category rank within arts and entertainment, visual arts, is 31, with roughly 1.2 million visits per month. Bounce rate of 47%, which is pretty good. We have 4.32 pages per visit, and people usually spend around two minutes on the website. And let's just compare it to other stats like Society6, who are number five on, the on that same category, Redbubble on number 13 with other arts and entertainment. 28.6 million visits a month. We have Society6 with 6.5 million visits. Zazzle with 18.6, more than Society6, of course. And these are much bigger, but the way I see it in print is a lot smaller, but they also have very few artists. So if they have less traffic and less artists, maybe I do have a chance. At least that's what I was thinking. And then two days went by and I was actually accepted to inference and I was super, super excited. I was kind of starting to doubt myself, I think. So I dove right back into the platform and I was really thinking, you know what, I'm gonna give it a try. Not a lot of people are entering this platform. I mean, I mean 1.2 million a month is a lot, but not as much and that's the and that's exactly when um, I went in and saw the mistake with the Maya.royo and I was like, oh man, it said Instagram username, not Instagram link. Guys, really pay attention when it says Instagram username or Instagram link, okay? So I put in the username. I'm surprised I got accepted, <laughs> even if it wasn't true. Oh my God, it's so weird. And I also put in the maya.royo website, like the mayaroyo.com website. And the website is not done yet. I know it was part of my goals and it's not done. But currently what I have there is sort of a coming soon page that is also being used on my Instagram. And then I went to manage my shop and it says nothing. <laughs> and then you just go to ad print. Yes, ad print. So it says make sure the color is RGB. Uh, check out the files uh, are uh, by the requirements below. They have to be JPEG or TIFF files, by the way. And they have to be 100 megabytes or less. Uh, a minimum of 1800 by 1800 pixels. That's a check. I'm making my art like on 7000 by 7000 pixels and no more than 6600 by 10200. And I was looking into the artist race. You're going to be able to choose them after. And it's so weird. I mean, look at the uploading process. There is just like name, category, description, and tags in the ad file. And you can send prints to yourself or as a gift to check them out. And I was like, okay, this sounds good. So I went into my acrylic paintings and I started with my bunny. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. I, I made a cute bunny. I'm starting to illustrate a bunch of stuff for Easter. And yes, there will be some Easter stuff in our February bundle box at the end of the month. So you can go ahead and check it out when that one comes. And I just wrote down the bunny <laughs> and it's an illustration. And you know, it's a digital acrylic illustration of a cute bunny in a field. I didn't really know what to write. I mean, Mind you, again, this was literally the first time I was ever uploading anything to this platform. I made this sweet bunny illustration inspired by the upcoming Easter. Um, that's pretty much it. As for tags, um, uh, people always ask me if I do tag research. No, I look at the painting and I say what it is. So it was bunny, cute, acrylic, Easter, field, uh, I don't know, cute bunny, animal, baby animal, baby bunny. I, I think that a lot of, like, this is not something that I designed for keywords. This is keywords about what I designed. It's a totally different thing. And I was looking again at the bunny because I kind of forgot what's in it. And I was like, magical. Because it's kind of, I don't know. I think I f it felt magical to me. And then I clicked on upload. And again, this was so cool. Just trying to, you know, check out uh, a new platform from the get-go. And then it's, you know, charging up the artwork. And again, I just uploaded one file. And then it was thinking. It was processing. It was processing for quite a long time. And while it was processing, I was looking into the other stuff that I made. I was trying to think what I want to upload. 
I was trying to think, you know, if my art is good enough. I was also looking into my tarot project. I, I want to share with you guys. I'm going to do my own tarot deck. So that was cool. And then something happened in the stream. So I got back to it. And I was looking into this and all of a sudden I could see the print pricing down below and a link to my art. So I went below to the print pricing and I saw that the suggested price is 25, but it's on 15. I also saw that the cell phone cases was not activated, so I activated it. And I was looking into, okay, so they suggest 25, I'll put in 20. They suggest 30, I'll put 25. I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, maybe if they suggest 55, I'm gonna leave it at 50. Or maybe 52, no, I'm probably gonna leave it at 50. And I was really looking into like, what am I supposed to do here? Am I, can I not adjust it? How is it going to look on a card? It's a square. Are, the cards are not a square, right? And I was looking at the price and I was kind of refreshing it several times because I didn't realize. I thought maybe it was a mistake. So I was trying to check it out on a different browser. So on a different browser that I'm not connected, the price of a print was 20, 25, and 50, what I wrote down. And when I was looking on it from Chrome, which is where I was doing the design and logged in, the price was 8 10 and 25 if I want to order it for myself. We have the phone cases as well, which took a bit more time for the actual mock-up to come into place, like to be featured. You also have the canvas prints as well as the acrylic prints. And then you have the art cards, which again, I could not adjust. I thought maybe I can edit the product from the cards, but it didn't edit the card. To be honest, I had art prints, canvas prints, acrylic prints, and phone cases up above. I didn't have cards there at all. So I was thinking that for other designs that I will be making, you know, you can control some of these, you can upload a different file for the phone, but maybe for other designs that I will be uploading, I will try to upload something that better fits cards instead of that, that square size that I usually do. And even maybe try and make my designs to fit cards because it does look rather adorable. I was I was playing back and forth. I think I was trying to view my shop and I kept on going into editing my shop. Again, this was like the first time of me touching a platform. It's like basically going back and forth to the same thing to realize what everything does, including trying to click on multiple things. And I really got upset about the card. I really wanted to make my card nicer. And I was looking at what other people were doing and I had no idea how to change it. And then I was like checking out some stuff. And then I just went into help <laughs> to imprint and just try to see like, what are the sizes of the art cards? How, what can I do? And I was looking for, you know, um, what the size of the art card or how am I supposed to design it? What are the specs of this? And they don't actually have anything about the size of the art cards. And then I remembered, am I dumb? I could just go to the art card and just uh, see the size because it's 5.5 inches by 7.5 inches so I'm just gonna design something in those dimensions and that would be easier I was like what was I thinking <laughs> I don't need any dimensions I can just crop it and as you can see if you want to buy it for yourself it's five dollars and it's six dollars if someone else wants to buy it so you get uh, an eight dollars if you want to buy your own print at that point I decided that I'm uploading another product and I'm gonna try to upload a product that's gonna look better on a greeting card like on an art card itself, which means that it's going to have to have the dimensions of a card. I was looking maybe into my tarot cards, the tarot designs that I did, and don't worry, there's going to be a full video on that. And I decided I'm not going to go with that now. Maybe my flower, like the flower that got me accepted. And I went to the flower. I duplicated it, of course, before I'm cropping anything. And I was looking into maybe trying to sort of crop it out and the way that these dimensions are going to fit. The dimensions of a five by of a five point five by a seven point five, and it just didn't look good. I mean, that flower didn't look good. I mean, obviously, you know, you don't have to crop everything to make it fit. You can crop some stuff to make it fit, but I'm just I was just thinking like from now on, I'm just gonna try and make my designs to fit that from the start because I think that it looks better. And what I did think would look good was this little girl here again, copying it before I crop it, not cropping the original one and I was sort of playing around with making it like sort of 7,000 by 5.2 and trying to wiggle it and see inside the frame how it's gonna look good or if it's gonna look good. I'm, I'm an extreme perfectionist in these things so sometimes it's a bit of a hassle. Uh, I ended up uploading you know, this little girl calling it 
purple thoughts. Again, writing a short description about what I painted as well as some tags like woman, women, face, purple hair, pink hair, acrylic painting, lady, faces, sad, eyes, thinking or stuff like that and make this product public and upload this product. And of course, waiting for the processing, which took forever. <laughs> While this was taking forever, I was still exploring some of the things in my store that basically had one product at that time. Going back, I changed the pricings a bit uh, to the art prints of 22, 26, and 42 and activated selling this on phone cases. And I was really looking forward to see if this time this is going to look good on an art card and you have your link here down below. So I took that link, I went into my profile and Purple Thoughts, lo and behold, is here, appearing as an 8x10, 12x15, and 19x24 as an art print and as an art card looking much, much better. I kind of really liked it. I'm thinking about doing some of these like cute ones for Easter. Now, there are no fancy mock-ups in this software. There is nothing completely fancy and crazed up like in Redbubble or Society6, but I did find that the fact is that they're very focused on artists and you have to get accepted. That was very appealing to me when I want to sell my own art. And yes, the prices seem a bit high, but everybody's saying that they have really good quality. I've watched a few videos about like product reviews for them. And I also decided to order for myself. But before I order for myself, I wanted to upload more stuff to my store. So the second part of the video that you saw of me uploading the products was actually done a few days ago, very early in the morning when I woke up and realized that I was accepted. A few hours after I uploaded both of these designs, I went to the co-working space here in Bansko called Nestwork. Uh, it's been nice coming back there <laughs> and uploaded a bunch more of my designs onto the platform, including some really, really cute flower designs. And then something interesting happened. I went to grab a slice of pizza with uh, Christy. You've seen Christy O'Connor in this channel before. She was here with me reviewing the quality of print on demand stickers and sticker sheets. And we were grabbing lunch and I wanted to show her in print. And I went in for my phone. Mind you, I'm not connected to my user for my phone and I was never connected for my phone in the house. This was not using the same internet, so nothing like that. And I went in for my phone showing her in print. And while I was showing it to her, I thought it would be cool to like just try to show her my profile. But because I wasn't connected, I was like, hey, let's type in acrylic flower. <laughs> and I was like, what was I thinking? I literally just uploaded it an hour ago. And scrolling down, I was like, oh my god, this is my flower. <laughs> Yellow spot in the mix is mine. And also leaves glow is mine. Two of my flowers out of two were on the front page when I typed in acrylic flowers and I uploaded them an hour ago. There was no one <laughs> happier than me at that point. It felt brilliant. I can't, I can't even describe you guys how it felt to just see it flat on here. And following that excitement and uploading a lot more stuff onto Inprint, I ended up making an order. And if you want to check out my order with me, I ordered purple thoughts on a card. I ordered a card of the Ace of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords because I am doing my own tarot deck and this is actually not for my own tarot deck. This is an alternative design meant to fit the sizes that are at in print. I'm also uploading some of them onto Tee Public. I also ordered prints of Ace of Wands, Ace of Cups, The Bunny, Leaves Glow, Madison Owl, Yellow Spots in the Mix, and an iPhone 12 mini case, a new one, of the Ace of pentacles. And for all of these designs, which are one, two, three cards, one, two, three, four, five, six prints, like the smallest prints and a phone case, I paid $88 and $46 for shipping. I wanted to order canvases and I wanted to order uh, acrylic prints, but the canvas shipping was pretty much four times the actual cost of the canvas to ship to Bulgaria, which is insane. I do believe the majority are shipping within the United States because the prices to the United States are the only one that are a bit normal. But I am looking forward to receiving these products. And when I do, of course, I will keep you guys updated. By the way, if you like this video and found this content useful, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, it really does help my channel. And subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. I hope that you enjoyed this little rundown of Inprint and I would love to hear what you guys are thinking about. I mean, if you are a true artist, this is definitely one of the platforms to be on. The upload process seems 
pretty straightforward. There's no messing around. It's not as long as compli and complicated as Society6. It doesn't have a lot of products, just the basics. Kind of wish they had jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> but then again, I wish everything had jigsaw puzzles. And a lot of things have been going on recently. I've been contacted. I don't know what, what happened, but like in the past week, I got so many emails for like making uh, sponsored videos, recommending different plugins and different softwares and different print and demand suppliers. And I have so many softwares that I need to check out. So I'm going to pretty much spend the whole weekend doing that. But while I will be spending my weekend doing that, you could spend your weekend watching a video that was already recorded with my friend Darlene Lopez, who came here to my humble home to check out print on demand leggings from Redbubble and Society6 with me and left with a gift, of course. And that will be aired throughout the weekend. And I'll see you guys next week with design tutorials, a video about the nine reasons why all of my Etsy shops failed and what I have learned from it. And I'm talking to a lot of Etsy stores as well as some cool other videos that you guys have requested. I also know that a lot of people have been requesting me to do like a Redbubble alternatives video, like print on demand marketplaces you can sell on. I was thinking about doing like a really big one, but ma mainly for artists or even like mentioning if it's more suitable for artists or more suitable for text designs. Please let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. And also comment if you have any video suggestions as I am filling up my list of videos for the month of March. I can't believe I'm, I'm looking into videos for March. That's insane. Time truly flies. And with that being said, that was it from me for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as usual, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.